And I started uh, my field identification of the eastern hemlock about a month ago in a um, unusual location for that plant. It was well outside its normal geographic range, but it was uh, growing on a north facing slope near water. So it was a cooler location than the surrounding woods. Well, today finds me in a location where hemlock is common and you would expect to find it on almost every hike that you do in the Catskill Mountains here. This is part of the Appalachian Mountain chain and it's in upstate New York. We're about 120 miles northwest of New York City. And the water coming down this mountain stream will be captured by several water supply lakes and piped underground all the way to New York City through a system of underground aqueducts. It's quite the engineering feat to keep uh, 8 million people um, supplied with water. So this is the headwaters of the Delaware River here. A very large boulder in the background, but this is where we would often find the eastern hemlock growing along these moist, shady, cool ravines in these mountains here. It's very common. You'd be hard pressed to do a hike without finding it. Maybe only at the highest elevation. So we've got some medium sized hemlocks here, about 16 inches around. The bark has got a, almost like a braided pattern here. It almost might resemble some of the patterns you see on a hickory tree or an ash tree, but the color is much different. It's a much darker brown with just a little reddish hue. Now this tree here is a couple feet around. This may be 150, 200 years old right here. This tree actually has some chunks in the bark, longer than my hand here, and it all it actually does break off. So eventually as the bark gets older, these hemlock trees develop these chunks and hunks of bark. Some of them may break off, it almost resembles a deep furrow in the bark. So this is our eastern hemlock habitat on a moist ravine here. And a cooler part of the country. This tree is common throughout the Appalachian Mountains. It's common in the upper part of the lower Great Lakes, central Michigan, northeast Ohio, western New York. It is also common in some of the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains as well. Fortunately here, it is not, has not sustained damage from the hemlock woolly adelgid, but areas east of here, in the Hudson and Connecticut Valleys and all along Interstate 81 through Virginia, Tennessee and North Carolina, there's many, many diseased hemlocks that are dead or dying. But this area um, is still, most of these are very healthy trees. Here's one here, it's about eight inches around. So it's got that almost like a braided pattern here. Hasn't developed the chunks yet, but as they get older, they do. And I'll just review the foliage and the cones. I've got a branch here that broke off. We've got cones about the size of a penny. We've got these flat needles. They're dark green on the upside. And if you flip it around, it is a lighter color due to the fact there's actually two white lines on the back of each needle. You can see them there as it comes into focus. So those two white lines help you determine this is a hemlock. Some of the balsam trees get that as well. But their needles are uh, longer and they are arranged differently than the hemlock. And that's the only species you would probably confuse this with. But the bark of the balsam fir tree and the Fraser fir do not resemble the hemlock. It's got sap, sap blisters about the size of a um, Oh, about the size of a, I can't even think of the right word. They're, the sap blisters are about the size of my pinky nail, but they're horizontal and they're not as wide as my pinky nail. So it's a blister on the tree that is filled with liquid sap. And if you push on it, the sap will ooze out. So really no confusing these trees, but you can and often do find them say, 
growing in the same mountainside in these cooler climates of the northern Appalachian Mountains and the higher elevations of the southern Appalachians. So here's more field identification of the eastern hemlock tree.